Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to uh, Working Man Ron Doyle. I've got a little bit of a, a uh, problem that I've got at a new construction home. I am a master electrician in the state of Maryland. I am doing a trim out on a house in Salisbury, uh, doing all the outlets and looking around the perimeter of the rooms. I found uh, one outlet was uh, covered up by the uh, drywallers and that, that kind of thing happens. You uh, want to be able to uh, learn some cheat tricks on how to identify where an outlet is where it's, where it's actually covered up and missing. Uh, because to code, you know you have to have one at every six foot of e every egress in a residence, and you have to have them no further than 12 feet apart. So I'm gonna show you this wall that's missing this outlet, and I'm gonna show you some uh, tips and tricks on uh, how to find it, fix it, solve the problem. Stay tuned. All right, as you can see, we have got a staircase coming from the first floor. Uh, right now the power is off. We have heat and uh, nothing else is hooked up. Uh, all the outlets are dead. All the lighting is dead. Uh, but uh, So we're safe in doing this process. Uh, all the outlets are not charged. There's no current on them. So uh, I would suggest that uh, you do the same in uh, trying to find your outlet that's possibly hidden with sheetrock. But we've got a, a wall that adjacent to the staircase and going around the room from the egressible area. This is like a uh, like a big open uh, game room, bonus room. That's on the second floor. It's got a uh, storage closet slash attic area right there uh, with a dormer, a double window dormer. But coming into this particular room, looking on this wall that you see here, we have to have an outlet within six foot from the starting edge of this wall over to here and down. And as you can see, from the corner of that wall to that very first outlet right there, we've got 10 foot six. Uh, there is an outlet that is somewhere in this vicinity that is covered up. Looking around the room to see if we have any more, we've got a, this is a closet. And going from that door jam right there on the closet, going around this, uh, that's within six foot. And then from that outlet, to this outlet over here, that's within 12 foot. And then from that outlet to the one that's behind that door, that's 12. And then from the one that's behind that door right there, which is, I mean, it's houses under construction, it's not installed yet. But that from that outlet over to this one is within 12. And then from there to this corner is within 12. And where this is a door jam, it's a break in the wall. It separates one wall from another wall. This is the, uh, you see the attic space. We have to have an outlet within six foot from the edge of this doorway over to here. And that is within six foot. Same way over here where this, this doorway breaks this wall. We have to have an outlet within six foot from the edge of the door. So what I did was balance them out between this outlet and that outlet over there. Uh, now those two outlets, that one and that one, are, are within 12 feet apart. But we gotta take care of this underlying problem. Where there's no outlet in this particular wall. It's been covered up. So I'm gonna set you up on a tripod and I'm gonna go through the process of finding this outlet. Uh, as you can see, let me see if I can get you lined up here. You should see a blister in this wall here. No, no, she's right in here. I can feel it. Putting your hand together, putting it flat on the wall and running in a horizontal fashion. You can feel bulge in the wall. My guess is the outlet is right here. But let me get you on this uh, tripod and uh, go through my process of finding this thing. Eighteen inches to the top of the top of the box is what we're looking for. What I'm going to do is take my hand, put it flat on the wall, my initial guess, somewhere in that matter. Now I'm going to draw a reference mark 
with the pencil graphite at 18 inches to the top of where the box should be. And I'm going to show you a couple more methods of trying to find this. Now I know there's a lot of uh, debate between electricians, electricians, helpers, drywallers, and painters uh, about finding these and uh, who's responsible for actually identifying where it's at and opening it up. Most of your drywallers that have covered up a, uh, a box will, and you request them find it, they'll actually find it for you and cut it out. Depending on what process you're in and trying to get the job done, uh, you don't want to wait for a drywaller. It might take them two, three days to get here. Um, and you're almost finished. You want to wrap the job up and get out of here. So you proceed to find it yourself. Well, some contractors would hold you responsible if you make damage in the sheetrock uh, because you didn't leave it up to the drywaller. Uh, the guy, that I, the contractor I work for, he's, um, he's pretty lenient. Uh, of course, most of the time I find the boxes without any great deal of effort. But uh, there's a couple ways that you can find it. And uh, a lot of electricians will actually go around and bash holes in the wall trying to find the box. Uh, don't be that electrician. Don't be vindictive. Um, it's quite possible that they did cover it up by accident. It wasn't intentional. And the next job that they go to, that they know you're doing, they might intentionally cover up more than one. So don't be a vindictive electrician. Uh, what comes around goes around. Don't punish other people for a mistake that they made. So one of the one of the things that you could do. Uh, after you've done your rough end on a particular house is actually take a uh, video camera uh, walk around of each room, label the video with the house number uh, and basically no insulation, all studs exposed in boxes and your job is complete right before the um, electrical inspector comes in. Do a quick walk around video of it. You can always go back and reference to things that might be hidden and uh, helping you locate your, your boxes. A lot of people prefer the, the level method on the wall. Some people go by the, the touch of hand. Um, a level on the wall will show you if you have rock. Right here, wall's flat. This isn't rock at all. Down here, rock's like a boat, back and forth. As you can see, vertical and horizontal. Another, uh, another method of finding it is using a flashlight, bright light, LED, halogen, uh, and do, do shadow effects. Some guys go down the wall with the light and look for the, the ripple in the wall. Uh, other people will use a, where's it at? A, uh, hold on, let me find it. Another method of uh, finding the box that's in the wall is uh, as long as the wires, there's wires in the box that's in the wall, you can use a tongue tracer which this is a Southwire T200K. It's got, uh, it's got some attachments in the back for this little door. You have a transponder and then you have a finder. This is the finder and this is the transmitter that sends out the uh, signal. You open in the back, you know, take a, uh, one of the clip-on leads, plug the tester into the back side of it push the button, turns on with a, a red uh, blinking light and hold this test button here and when it gets close to a pair of wires that you've clipped this to it will send an audible signal through this device. So I'm going to go over here to this corner, clip it on the wires and find it. hear it and it's a, in a very low tone, make sure you got your volume all the way up. Run it over the wall. Now you notice I'm not touching the wall, I'm not marking the wall up. The signal's real faint. I'm going to switch it on the other set of wires that are in that box.
right in that region is where this is detecting the signal. Now, one other thing that you can do to uh, get a reference point, this particular box has got two little nubs on the nail flange side where you've installed it, so the stud is on this side of the box. Going down, there's a stud. Take your level and lightly put a reference mark below the box. Okay, I got a reference mark. Now from that mark, I'm going to do an inch and a half over because that's the width of a normal 2 by 4 stud. Now, in my process of wiring houses, I don't like to group too many uh, boxes on the same side of the stud because you end up having to use cable stackers uh, because you're, you're over the allowable amount of wires that are allowed to lay on the face of a stud with regular staples. Cable stackers cost more. I try to do away with using those. So my better judgment, this is a two by four in between these two reference marks going off of this box. The box that we're looking for is on this side of the stud. So this box is on this side of the stud. The box that is covered up is on that side of the stud. We know our reference point is at 18 inches to the top of the box. I've got 18 inches on this mark. I'm gonna draw a, a line going across. And what I'm going to do is another reference line. Going down, I'm going to take a uh, small drill and I'm going to guess over about seven eighths of an inch. We're going to drill very slow, very shallow. All right. I'm going to take the drill bit out because this is stiff, rigid tool steel. I'm going to stick it in the hole and I'm going to feel around for what would be resistance on this drill bit, like a, a springy, uh, springy consistency. So I'm looking to hit a wire and I'm, on, I'm running on the smooth shank of the bit so I don't scar my wire up. I'm using this end. Sticking it in the wall, I'm feeling around and I'm hearing, I'm listening for wires. Okay, I got it, that's it. So now we're gonna take a uh, wall board saw, drywall saw, and we're gonna go from that center hole, and we're gonna work to the, to the right, to the left, up and down. Cut very shallow. Okay, plastic leaves a, a distinct cut when you're, when you're cutting back and forth, uh, when you're cutting with this particular type of saw, you'll feel it drag differently across plastic than you would wood. So I know that this is the edge of my box. I'm gonna flip this over, slide this in the wall, so that my blade is coming out on a 90 degree angle, and I'm gonna put a permanent reference mark. Now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna to go to the opposite side. You wanna make sure you don't snag your wires. All right, that's the edge of my box. I use my knife, my uh, saw as a reference. And that's the other side of the box. Now I'm gonna go up. Now I'm gonna go in the downward direction. take my level and this is a smooth level if you all are looking to find a box on a finished floor you got carpet down and you're trying to locate this box what you can do is get you a Warner bucket it's a Warner ladder bucket and uh, I've got a piece of pad to protect it so if I hit the wall it doesn't scar but in this case I'm going to collect the dust that's on that's going on the uh, from the cut before it hits the floor and the profile of this bucket right here will allow you to put it to the wall like so and catch 75-80% of the dust. There's our, that's our reference marks. But very carefully, I'm 
going to follow along the bottom. Now I'm going to cut on a severe angle and try to find the edge of that box. I want to go to the outside edge of the box on an angle. same thing. I'm going to angle my saw in a downward fashion and I'm going to find the top edge of that box. Now I'm going to go for the bottom, angling it down. Now I'm going to angle this out and try to find the edge of the box with the blade. Now on this side you're going to hit the stud. Support this last piece so you don't have drywall tear out. Now you can rake the majority of your dust in the box and get you a uh, utility knife to do your fine trimming. Now if you're doing this in your home, you're going to create nail pops. There's a nail pop right here that's starting. Most of your drywallers will not want you to beat the, ball, beat the wall in and create unnecessary nail pops. They want you to install the outlet the way that it is. Well, there's a code that you can't be no more than a quarter inch back with an eighth inch gap on this particular box. And right now, we are setting back at seven sixteenths of an inch. What has happened is they installed the sheetrock over top of the box and then rotor zipped around the boxes. This box was not found in time and it's created a bulge in the surface, the finished surface of the sheetrock. Now to get that back, you can push it back to the wall, but you create nail pops. Here's another one. Here's another one right here starting. So we've got two nail pops that are starting on this wall because I'm pushing it back. If you don't want to make the nail pops, then make a device. This one's made by Arlington. This is a box extension. And what this does is it allows you to reduce the gap, the width and the setback from the drywall to the facing of the box. It reduces that amount so that you're compliant to code. This is an Arlington product. It's a, for a single gang. They make these all the way up to four gang. And here is one that is non-adjustable. Uh, so this can vary from the setback all the way as much as an inch and a half setback into the wall. Uh, like if you were to lab, somebody were to lab this out and uh, put sheetrock up, you'd have an inch and a half gap with a two by four uh, labbing on the facing of the, of the stub wall. Um, this one would be ideal. This one's ideal if it's a fixed amount. Now, they sell these in uh, quarter, five sixteenths and three eighths. This one happens to be three eighths of an inch. I could legally put this, cut this to fit. Go ahead and trim it so you can see what it looks like. Illegally, we can install that trim ring and uh, extension ring and, and we can make that code compliant by using that one. It's, it's fixed, the sheet rock still floats um, but you're not creating unnecessary nail pops. Uh, the other way of doing that is re-securing this to the wall with sheetrock screws, which I plan on doing. This house needs to be uh, uh, finished painting. Uh, they've, done, they've done all the finished painting, but they have to come through and do some touch-ups. So this is going to be one of the things they're going to want to address when they come through doing the touch-up phase. 
Um, price wise, these are about a buck. These are about a dollar to two dollars a piece. Like I said, they sell them in different widths. Um, I keep these on my truck all the time. These are a much better choice, in my opinion. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and get some screws and do some securement to get this drywall back flush to the stud where our box is more code compliant. And most of your sheet rockers will put between four and five screws per four foot run of drywall. Now where this drywall is bowed and has a belly hanging out, you have to do more than that to get the bow pulled back in tight. You wanna make sure that you don't do any one screw uh, over tight because it'll break the sheet rock, the paper facing of the sheet rock before it pulls back. So I'm gonna start down here. I'm just gonna get one end snugged up. I'm gonna do one in between that screw, one down low, and one in the middle. Now if you have any paper bulging, you want to make sure you free your box up so you don't have breakout. Light taps around the hole will show you if anything's held up with uh, excessive drywall. Now you got your box, you found it. Box is flush to the uh, drywall surface. Now you can proceed to uh, install your outlet. Now on the, uh, getting your outlet installed is not gonna be a problem. They'll be able to mud around the outlet. Uh, you may wanna leave the, uh, the trim plate off until the, uh, the end so that they will have ample opportunity to do the uh, drywall patching and the painting without messing up your, uh, your trim plate. So ladies and gentlemen, I really hope this was uh, helpful and uh, beneficial to you all in finding outlets on your next project. And uh, if you all liked the video and thought it was helpful in any way, appreciate you giving me a thumbs up. Uh, if you care to subscribe, it's free of charge, doesn't cost anything. Uh, I'd like to see you all back on the next video. Happy New Year's to you all, God bless. Y'all have a wonderful year.